Hey everyone, welcome to the book study. We're here at uh, going to look at chapter 7 today about the burden of hopelessness. Now, if you read the chapter, you know that he talks about that Max talks about the uh, you know, the idea of a jungle, that we're all trapped in this jungle. And I you know, I don't know what your life's like right now, but my life sometimes feels a little bit like a jungle. It feels like, you know, I don't know what's around the next corner. I'm kind of tangled up. I, it's kind of mysterious. There's danger lurking in every corner. It's thick. There's really no pathway. If you've ever been in the woods, you know, I was in the Boy Scouts for a while, we used to do you know hikes through the woods, and, and and that was nothing compared to the thickness of a jungle, you know, and and uh, you know trying to find the path, trying to find which way God wants us to go, and a lot of times, you know, we get lost in the middle of that jungle, and we feel, you know, we, we start feeling hopeless, we start feeling like you know God, where are you in this, and how am I going to get through this, and um, that's a terrible place to be. I don't know if you're there right now. I don't know if you're feeling like you know I don't know where my hope's going to come from. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. How I'm going to get through it. Well, let's take a look at the chapter real quick. This is, um, if you're just joining us, if it's your very first time on the blog, you're here on brianvassal.com or internetcampusblog.com. Uh, we're kind of looking at the book Traveling Light by Max Lucado, and, you know, because the chapters are so, there's so many of them, um, you know, we're kind of doing half here on the blogs and half live. So we'll be doing another one on Thursday, and I believe this one is about worry. So this Thursday we're going to talk about, about worry. And uh, But before we do that, you know, I just want to dig a little bit here into this chapter 7. And, you know, the verse we're looking at is from Psalm uh, 23. You know, of course, the whole chapter study is through the 23rd Psalm. But this is verse 3 where he says, He restores my soul. You know, he gives me gives me hope. So looking through the chapter, he starts off talking about the jungle. And he says, you know, some of us feel trapped in the jungle. And, I mean, I don't know what type of jungle you're in. Maybe it's relational. Maybe it's spiritual. Maybe it's emotional or financial even. Um, you know, I, I don't know. But a lot of us, we feel trapped in that jungle, and he, you know, Max lists in the book, what would it take for you to to get out of that jungle? You know, what's it going to take for you to get out of the jungle? And uh, he says you need three things. First one is a guide, someone who knows the jungle, you know, to be able to lead us in the path out. The second thing he mentions is that we need a vision. You know, we don't need somebody to just tell us, yeah, you know, just go that way. We need to have bigger vision than that. We need someone to lead us that is going to tell us that there is a better place, that you're not going to be here forever, that there is going to be, you know, uh, a way out. And, uh, and he, you know, maybe even going one better. We need somebody who's going to tell us, not only do I know there's a better place, but I'm going to lead you there. And the third thing the book says we need is direction. And, um, you know, not just someone who knows the jungle, but knows that, that they can take us from one place to another. So we need a person to do it. We need vision to know there is going to be a better place. And we need direction on how to get there. And I really believe that, that this hope that we're missing is just a matter of perspective. In fact, if you, if you look in your books in that chapter, he says, you know, of course, that, that jungle guy that we need is Jesus. You know, that we need to know that when we feel hopeless, when we feel like we're, you know, trapped in the jungle of economics or trapped in the, in the jungle of, of relationships or trapped in that jungle of, of hopelessness, that we know that we can, we can turn to the Christ, the ultimate guide, and get out and have a way to be able to get out of the jungle. In fact, read right here from the book. It says, Jesus has the right vision. He reminds you, in fact, he's reading from Scripture, Max says, he reminds you that you are like a for that you are foreigners and strangers in this world. And we talked about that last week. We talked about being, you know, the earth is not our home, that we have a better place in heaven. We talked about that last Thursday. That's from 1 Peter 2.11. And uh, Max continues, he says, He urges you to lift your eyes from the jungle around you to the heaven above you. So to change your perspective, to not look, you know, at the jungle and the trees and the vines and the tangled in your life, to not look at the zero bank balance, to not look at the health issues, to not look at the marital strife you might be going through or your kids are struggling with something or, or whatever it is, to not look there but to look upward. You know, to really look at heaven with maybe a different perspective. He, he, the Colossians 3.2 from the message says, Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground. Absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. See things from his perspective. And I think that's huge. That when we start feeling hopeless, we need to remember to look up. Not look straight ahead, not look at the vines and the tangles, but to look up and to look at Christ. He says, don't shuffle along eyes to the ground. Absorb the things right in front of you. And a lot of us want to do that, right? I mean, we want to see things that are right here. Why? Because that's what we have to deal with. I mean, those are the things that we have to deal with in the right now. You have bills this month. You have bills this week. You know, you have someone come into your house that may provoke confrontation. Maybe it's a friend or a family member that you have to deal with right now. It's that right in front of your face idea. And he says, don't look just right in front of your face. Don't look for what's around you, Colossians says. Look to Christ. Look to God. In fact, Psalm uh, 121, 
verses 1 through 7. David said it this way, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from, David says? My help comes from who? The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Now, it doesn't mean that harm's not going to happen. But it is important that when we are trapped in that jungle to remember that my eyes, I need to turn my eyes to the Lord. You know, to the Lord, he's not going to let my foot slip. He's going to protect me. Now, is he going to let me go through some stuff to build my character? Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. That You and I are going to feel like struggling from time to time. We're going to feel like, you know, God, where are you in this? But we know, we know that he's going to guide us out. That he's going to give us the vision that there is a better place. And he's going to direct us and direct our paths to get out. That he's going to give us the hope that we need. In fact, Jesus went even as far as to say this. I am the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I, I you know, I, I am the way. I, I am all you need. So when you feel yourself feeling hopeless, you know, just remember that he is the way, that he's, he's the ultimate guide back to hope, that Jesus Christ himself, he is, he is, I am, he is the I am. He is hope, that he is hope. Now, before, as we kind of wrap up, it's kind of a short message today. I just want to rem remind you that, as you know, the jungle doesn't ever stop. I mean, just because you have hope doesn't mean you're never going to have troubles again. The jungle doesn't go away. He's the pathway out. In fact, if you ever travel through a jungle or thick underbrush and you have to cut your way through, you know, you have to make the path. There's no path for you. You have to make it as you go. The great part about following Christ is you don't have to cut the path. That Jesus, being our guide, is going to cut that path for us. He's going to go ahead of us and give us hope and cut down those big, thick vines so we have a place to walk. And remember, you know, he's not going to cut the path for us and then, you know, a long way away. He may be cutting it a day at a time. And, you know, today, when you woke up today, you might have said, I just don't feel any hope. I don't know where I'm going to, what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month. Here's the great part about what Christ is doing for us. He just says, you know what? I'm right in front of you. I'm cutting the path you need today. I'm giving you the manna you need for today. I'm giving you the strength and the wisdom and the power and the, the grace you need for today. That I'm not going to cut the path for three months down the road. I'm going to make sure that when you, it's time to put your foot down on the ground, that that ground is going to be solid rock. And it's going to be in me. And I just want to challenge you, if you're feeling hopeless right now, you don't, you don't want to carry that bag of hope. In fact, the, the Max Locato says here that that bag is not a heavy bag, it's empty. Hopelessness means we feel empty inside. I want you to take the time right now and fill yourself up and remind yourself that Christ has got it, that he's going to make the path for you, that he's going to set things straight, he's going to get you through the jungle you're in. And if you ever find yourself in another jungle, guess what? He created the jungle, he knows it better than anybody else. He's going to make sure that there is a way and you're going to have the vision and strength you need to get out. So I want you to take some hope with you today. Never, you know, he, Christ didn't come to die for us on the cross so we could live a hopeless life. I know from time to time we want to feel bad and we want to feel sorry for ourselves. We want to feel that weight on our shoulders. But man, just know that Christ says, you know, I'm going to lead you out. I'm going to give you the hope and the strength and the perseverance you need to find your way out of the jungle. So let's wrap up with prayer. And I hope you guys have been enjoying these little uh, blog Bible studies because uh, I've really had a blast putting them together. We still have a bunch more to go. In fact, next week, next Tuesday, we're going to talk about arrogance. Okay, that's a tough one, arrogance and uh, you know having a big head. So, <laughs> hopefully, none of you guys have to any struggles with that. Um, um, I, I would say that I don't, but then that'd be arrogant. So I'm going to say that I do. All right. So thanks for being here today. Hopefully, you guys uh, again take that hope into uh, into to the rest of today. If you're watching, or if you're no matter if you're watching in the morning, really live today with hope. Because remember, you know, you're being cared for, you're being watched. Every hair on your head is counted, and God knows exactly what you need and will provide your needs exactly the right time. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for this chance we've had to come together and talk about hope. And God, if we feel trapped in a jungle, for someone out there right now that feels trapped in one of these jungles we talked about, that you would just give them hope, that you would just remind them that you're in charge, that you've got it, and that you're going to cut the path away exactly the right time and the right way in, in your own timing, Lord. Help us be patient. Help us to be trusting. Help us to have faith. And, uh, Father, we just ask for blessings upon each and every person watching this video and uh, here on the Internet campus. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys very much for being here, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye-bye.